Hey everyone, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. I have flown pretty much halfway across the world to talk to this gentleman, Neil McCoy Ward. If you haven't checked him out, there's gonna be a link to his channel below. This is the first time his castle has ever been recorded or on YouTube or social media. And I asked you if I could put it in the shot, right? Yeah, yeah. I said, I, I was joking. I kind of said, oh yeah, you fly halfway around the world and we'll do an interview. And uh, if you do it this weekend, you can put it in. I was kind of joking, but I'm a man of my words. <laughs> well, now I so, get to write the trip off too. It's business, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so, awesome. So there we go. Well, we're going to be traveling around the property and doing some different shots and talking about different types of businesses. But if you could, Neil, could you give them just a little bit brief background about what you've done in your life and what you do now? Oh man, that, I mean, that would take a long time. But I, I you know, I didn't grow up with um, any money at all, actually. And I've just always worked on, on myself. Like every single day, I've just worked on myself and, and helped other people as well. I think that's the key that a lot of people miss. You can't just do it all for yourself. You've yeah. got to really help everybody else around you. And that's what I focused on. Yeah. I focused on help as many people as I possibly can. Like my life is, is I, that's how I see it. My life is for other people. What, help as many people as I possibly can in this life. Help them to get everything that they want out of life. And then that's how I've been able to achieve what, what I consider successful for, for my life by really serving other people. That's all I've done really. Yeah, and actually Neil and I met after I started a YouTube channel and we became good friends. We're, we have a lot of things in common and when we spend time together, it's, we, it's like our own little mini mastermind, right? Right, right. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna cruise up to another spot to sit down, but I wanna focus this video really on changing people's perspectives about life, business, success. And we'll talk a little doom and gloom too for everyone that wants to watch it. And I, I'm not joking when I say that, that's what attracts people. People are addicted to doom and gloom. And the sad thing is I, we, we both use it to try and pull people out of their uh, doldrums to become successful, right? And we're gonna tap, probably tap into some things right now in the world that you've been yeah. covering yeah. that are really bad, but wherever there is, there's opportunity, right? Right, yeah, so well, yeah, that's a good point. We'll do that. It's funny because a um, whole, uh, load of motorbikes just came by right now so we've got so much noise so it's probably good we go we go up uh, maybe to the woodland or something all right let's go up there, there. All, right. all right cool we'll be back so before we go to our filming location i had to ask him a question about this pond it's awesome this is b-roll by the way <laughs> uh well you want that so yeah yeah so i this is all mountain water straight out the rock from the mountain yeah so we own like quite a way back and it was just flowing straight off down the down here. Yeah. So doing hydroelectric on this. Yeah. So it's mainly off grid now, not 100 percent But I dug this pond out yeah. with a with a digger because I just wanted somewhere to do a cold plunge without yeah. post by the way guys, you can cold plunge without posting it to social media. <laughs> oh, <that's true>. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just like a nice cold plunge because I have wood burners in the house. Yeah. And, you know, you can do wood burner saunas and, and all sorts of things now. But that's just why it's there. It's nice to just get a freezing cold. Just wakes you up sometimes. So I dug that out. That's incredible. <laughs> all right, let's cruise up the hill. <laughs> all right, everyone. So we're on the set of Braveheart right now. Don't mind that house behind us. <laughs> but this is an amazing view. But there are some things that are actually not amazing. And that's what's going on with the state of affairs in the Western civilization, being America and in Europe. Now, Neil has businesses in different countries. He d conducts businesses or business all around the world. And I thought it would be very fitting to have him talk about the state of affairs in the nation of the, the UK, America, what you're seeing and what you're looking for next as far as opportunities. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, really good question actually. I think, well, let me firstly tell you what I think a lot of people are focusing on, which is the negative side. And everyone keeps saying, oh, you know, you see all the things that are happening, there's no opportunity, we're about to go into this big depression, and you know, all the sort of stuff. I mean, we talk about this a lot. Yeah, which but, we believe is gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, but, but the problem is that people focus on that and they then don't look for opportunity. And that's the mistake that I think most people make. By the way, we've got a lot of construction going on on the, on the, the castle roof at the minute, so ignore the noise in the background. Yeah. Um, but. You know, people keep focusing on all the, the negative and think there's no opportunity. But do you know that during the Great Depression, some absolutely huge companies were created? Yes. And I don't know if you've ever read the, the book Think and Grow Rich, but 
Napoleon Hill said that during the Great Depression, it was called the Great uh, Leveler. And the reason why was because rich and poor, everyone was reset back to zero. Yes. And then what, and this is why I always say to all of my people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, subscribers and students and people like that, or people I work with, JVs and mentees and everyone else. I, I, I'm always explaining to people that you want to invest internally, oh, right? Yeah. Before externally. Yeah, it's fine investing externally and buying assets and stuff like that. But I would never do it before I'd first invest a lot of money internally. Yeah. You know, I spent easily a hundred grand on my own. Oh yeah. Uh, personal education. Yeah, yeah, you know, it blows me away. We're so used to um, the Western philosophy of go get uh, a good education, get a good job. Yeah. But that's where it stops. And there are people like real estate agents will spend a lot of money to go take real estate classes, then pay to take a test. Mm. And then they go sell real estate that they've never even purchased or sold their, themselves. Right. And I, it shocks me when people don't go out and, and look for a mentor or pay for their time or yeah. learn from them, people that have actually done it before. Have you ever done that? Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. I've had mentors in all different fields of my life. Yeah. I've always done that. I've always invested in mentors, coaching groups, courses. Yeah. I've always done these things, and it was a great investment. Because what, what you'll often see is um, that there's a difference between people that do well and then they go broke. Yeah. And the, the difference is the people who do really well and go broke and then don't and stay broke yeah. is because they didn't have the, the mindset. Yeah. But the people who have the mindset, it doesn't matter how many times they go broke, they'll, they'll build it again. But there's also, it's the whole law of return and reciprocity. If you help a lot of people, then that is, that's good energy flowing, flowing back to you. You just got to keep helping people, blessing people yeah. all the time. And the more you bless people, the more that will come back to you. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's principles as well. There's a lot of biblical principles around tithing and, and, and it's, and there's a reason for that when you, you know, you give out and it doesn't have to be biblical, but it can be, you know, you could call it karma or whatever it is for your faith. Right. But the more that you go out and give, yeah. so see, see what I do, I, I tend to focus on the very fundamental human needs and, and, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, just to give you one model here. And you look at it, it's like oxygen, it's water, it's food, it's sleep. So, so I kind of focus on those, on those things with, um, with my level of service, right? So I give in those domains, mm -hmm. trying to give the most impact for, for the money I create. And then I, I feel as though by doing that work, it just seems to flow back to me all the time. So Amen. that's another principle, right? You know, it does... Uh this is, an, uh, this is an interesting sort of segue into this topic. I think there are a lot of very evil billionaires. Mm -hmm. I think there's some um, really yeah. uh, uh, great wealthy people too, smart people that are billionaires that want to help people. But it seems like more than not, they are self-serving and not wanting to do good things, let's say. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm sure names popped into people's minds are probably putting it down in the comments right now of certain mm -hmm. people that would do hard things. <laughs> I really believe yeah. that we... I, I, I believe that 99% of the people watching this video have good hearts yeah, yeah, and yeah. they want to make a difference in this world, but they yeah. don't necessarily understand how to. And being wealthy or rich is a bad thing. I think uh, our school system has almost taught that in a way that it's better to be a slave and an employee than to be wealthy and an employer, you know? Yeah. yeah well, there's a whole, there's a whole thing behind the school system anyway. Yeah. You got to think, how was it designed? Like you think of the, the modern day curriculum. It was designed around the industrial revolution. Yes. They had all these factories that they were building, they had electricity, and they had they didn't have the manpower. Mm -hmm. So they had to pull people in from agriculture, which was completely revolutionized. Yep. You had to pull people in from the the farms and the, the rural areas, and you had to pull them into the urban areas, and you had to get them into the factories. So you think about how people would sit in those rows, right? I'm talking to you, Elijah. Yeah. Talk, yeah, no, no, it's you, all right. You think how people were sat in those rows in the, the factories and they're doing all this work. Well, really, that's how the school system is. So you'd have your, your desk, your wooden desk it used to open, had all your stuff inside. And then you look at the factories, you'd have your desk and you work there. So the schooling system was designed to get people into these factory-based jobs. And even though we don't have that same level of I mean, that's China now today. You look at China and even China's moving away from that model in some regards because they are, um, they're bringing in AI and robotics to take over yeah. all those jobs. So the middle class in China is massive now. There's a lot of wealth. Their GDP is huge. 
but even they are going to be moving away shortly. And then it will move to other countries, India, Vietnam, a lot of Southeast Asia, uh, Lao, Myanmar, etc. You'll see a lot of movement going to those, those countries. Um, so that's really what, to answer your question there, that, that is the schooling system and why there's issues. But the other, the other thing behind it is the taxation system. Yeah. Now you should look into the taxation system of the US and income taxes and all these taxes. The, there, were, there were laws and there were things written and, and declared a long time ago around taxes. But you know, politicians being politicians, they overruled a lot of the laws to bring in taxes, which were only meant to be temporary. Yep. So they were, they were temporary taxes that came in for things like World War I, World War II, and then they were supposed to be removed afterwards, but they never have. That's right. And then you've got some states that just keep going, keep ramping it up, more and more taxes. California. And, uh, California is a big one, but we're just seeing more of this all the time. Just, yeah. you know, taxation and uh, it's getting worse and worse. And it's, it's only going to get worse, by the way, in, in Western uh, areas, Western countries. We're just going to see this getting worse. So that brings me to, so I had a friend uh, that actually worked for a foundation fully funded by the Koch brothers. And he went mm. around to all of the uh, Ivy League schools and, and large schools around the country. Their economics departments were yeah. purchased by them. And he actually went through the curriculums page by page and said, you could have this, but not this. Mm. And you're right. They want a class of workers, of slaves. Yeah. Now, one way to get out of this, and this is something you and I share in common, is to own businesses. Because right. you can't fight the tax system. If you stop paying the tax, man, bad things happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can legally get away from taxes by like what Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, threatened Trump. You know, he doesn't even pay taxes, he said, because I'm smart. Yeah. And I'm sure, um, you know, most people still do not understand that that is the case. You want to talk a little bit about that or maybe the freedom that, that has happened with you since you started multiple businesses? Yeah, yeah, well, one of the main issues was, and this is a common story that my subscribers know about, one day I sat, my wife and I, we went in and we had a really fancy accountant because he was looking after our group of companies. And I said to him, hey, Chris, I, I don't get this. Me and my wife were, were sat there. We had all our papers. We we're like, I don't get it. We earned all this money, but we only got this much to keep and all the rest, we've got this huge tax bill. And he said, well, the reason why, and I've preempted this meeting, you're actually paying about 72% in taxes. And you should have seen our jaw, it yeah. just dropped. And I was like, no, that can't be right because I pay 45% personal income tax, 12, 13% national insurance, and then I pay corporation tax, but that's, you know. And he said, no, no, you're paying what's known as VAT, which was a 20% because we couldn't pass it on to the customer or we wouldn't be competitive. We had all the business rates, then we had the business taxes, we had the staff taxes. So before we'd even paid ourselves, mm -hmm. we'd already lost half the, the money from the businesses. And then when we paid ourselves, we were on a 45% income tax bracket. We had another 12, 13% national insurance. Yep. We had all these taxes. And when you averaged it all out, it was about 72%. And, wow. and we just said, no. And this is the thing, everyone has a choice. Yep. People often say to me, oh, I don't have a choice. You know, I've got no choice in this matter. But actually, we all have a choice. Yeah. We all, we all do. And sometimes that choice might be negative at the start. And this is what a lot of people won't do. See, my wife and I, we started again all over from scratch here on this island, from scratch. We sold our businesses. How long ago was that? Again. That was two and a half years ago. That's right. Yeah. Man, it's grown fast. Oh, it's grown fast because <laughs> now what we were doing was yeah. we were getting, we were getting, you know, maybe halfway through the year before, in the UK this was, yeah. because we live on the Isle of Man now. So we were getting halfway through the year and we were just like, what's the point in working? Everything we're doing now is for the government. Yeah. So we would just get, not lazy, but we were demotivated from working because it was, it was pointless. Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, we said, we don't want to live like that. We want to be really motivated. Yeah. So we then decided to move here, start all over again. We just got a and it was hard to get a house here. So we, got, yeah. we went into a small rental property. We were there for a year while we tried to figure out what we wanted to do, where we wanted to buy. This that was the place I saw you at last time, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and, and what was interesting was this place came up, which is massive. Uh, it's, it is a big property. But so this place came up and we were like, 
you know, and, and we did, we prayed into it as well because we weren't sure if this was the right one because yeah. there was another property that we were going to buy and we weren't sure if it was the right one. Yeah. But then this came up and so many people had looked at it, but there was too much work and everyone was fearful. Yeah. And, and what I always look at is the same with any business challenge or complex challenge. I don't look at it as, okay, it's a castle <laughs> yeah. with loads of ground that hasn't been touched, some of it since the 1800s. I look at it as, okay, this week, let's work on this. Yeah. Let's work on the roof. Yep. Uh, next week, let's work on the, the, this stone wall. Uh, next month, we're going to work, work on the trees. Yeah. And that's how I look at it. I yeah. just allocate a little bit of time and resources every month to each part. And then by the time you got through it all, you, it's done. Yeah. But, but a lot of people, and this would be a tip for everyone, don't look at it as this massive thing. You've got to look at it as just a small step. Uh, every single every single day, every single week. That's how I do it. Okay, so we are actually at sort of the top of the property. This is a Victorian greenhouse. This isn't the top of the property. Well, I know. It's, well, it goes all the way up there. How much farther does it go? <laughs> it goes all the way up there, up the mountain. <laughs> There's so much hidden here. It's crazy. But this is a Victorian greenhouse. Yeah. There was a boiler, in, or it still is there. It's still in there. Inside there from what, the 1800s? Uh, 1850 it was built. It's incredible. And it had hot water going through this, and there was a steel structure. Yeah. They grew, uh, they grew melons and pineapples here in the 1850s. But, but what happened with this here, these were huge greenhouses. They actually rebuilt, you can see these are stone breeze block. Yeah. So they actually rebuilt all of this in a breeze block. And there was a, there was a, a stone facade that was stuck on, but it's been so long that the, the stone Spell has off. come off. Yeah. Uh, but we're, we're going to actually reinstate this and we're going to build these wood lodges. And I'll show you the designs inside the house. They are Dude. unbelievable. And we're going to turn this into a feature. Uh, That's and incredible. this will be like a woodland retreat, um, very quiet and peaceful retreat for people. Yeah. yeah. So I meant to bring you over here and talk about the depression. You yeah. know, unemployment was at 25%. One in four people didn't have a job. And that's what everyone right. focused on. Right. They don't focus on the three people that had the job. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In the Great Recession, I made a lot of money. You were still in the military serving, yeah, yeah. but I was selling, you know, tractors and trailers from people that lost their job yeah. and selling them to people that had jobs. Yeah. What do you think about? Um, because we both agree that this is going to be very bad. This next correction, yeah. this next recession is going to be deep. I believe deeper than the Great Recession. What yeah. do you see as far as some uh, some opportunities that are coming? Oh, I mean, AI definitely in okay. tech. Hundred percent AI yeah. in tech. See, people are fearful of it, but I think it's going to be the big opportunity. But actually, let me just break one other thing down. See, a lot of people are focused and concerned about this next upcoming recession, depression. Mm -hmm. I would say that's not really the thing to focus on because you, you've got to look at a longer term picture. So everything I do, I take it on a very, very long term approach. I'm not looking a couple of years, a few years. I'm looking 10, 20 years into the future. Yeah. And what we're seeing at the moment is the breakdown of Western democracy, society, even the economics. Everything's changing. And the AI, when it comes in, is going to revolutionize all that even, even faster. It's going to happen at such a rapid rate and the job losses will be so severe, but I think it's going to shock the average person. Now, yeah. at the same time, you've got a BRICS alliance. So you've got your Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, etc., as well as all the new countries that have come online. Oh, yeah. And there's so many applications for this year. So you're going to see a mass of what we're seeing is the rise of the East. And they're being very, very careful how they do it as well. They're sort of they're they're consolidating i think is the best word here they're consolidating power resources their economies and i think they're just getting ready for something big that's how i see it yeah and and you see and, and you know i don't mean any offense to to anyone online like the americans and and even the british and, and people like that because i'm british myself i just you know relocated from britain to, to this island here but what we've seen is this this dominance of the US, this dominance of Britain for a long time. And not everything has been positive. Yeah, we've brought some amazing things to the world. We really have as nations. We've, we've done incredible things in the world, but we've also done some very negative things in the world as well. And I think that what we're seeing is there's a lot of other countries that are either they don't like some of the things that, that have done. They don't like the fact that the US has the reserve currency, for example. There's a lot of things that they are not liking. And some of them are, let's just be honest, are, are, are jealous of the success that's been achieved by yeah. other nations. Yeah, right? that's true. So Especially the jealousy of being able to print money and export inflation right. and making them poorer. Right. 
But you think right now, the US dollar is so strong because there's a massive demand on it. Yeah. Have you ever thought about this? What happens when all of those dollars are no longer in demand? They go right back to us. They're, and you're going to see, uh, I mean, I can't Hyper tell you when. You're going to see hyperinflation yeah. on a scale you've never seen in history. Yeah. But it's not like it's going to happen next week, next month. We don't know when it's going to happen. Everyone feels that way. And I've, I've yeah. suffered from that as well. Yeah. Yeah. You always feel when you start to realize the reality of the world system, yeah. it's like at any second it could happen because you mm. know the truth. Yeah. But it seems like they're able to keep pushing it off until yeah. a certain point. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and, and now let's bring that up because BRICS changes mm. everything. Before yeah. they could just push it off, push it off. That, yeah. that yen carry trade as it unwound, mm. there was no stopping that for a second. No. And then they had to print a ton of money to stop it. Yeah. Oh, you got a friend on your finger. Oh, wasp, <laughs> a big hornet. <laughs> well, we already had you're to deal with that today. You're attracting the hornets today. I'm very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, BRICS, you know, is challenging their system even yeah, down to the time. way they print money and move money big time so um you know it's weird i just saw something inside mm. this camera uh. and i'm gonna say it on camera uh. as you were talking I, I i heard the founders of google and i was just all of a sudden this little flash and i i hope this is going to sound weird but i don't i don't give a rip if it mm. does or not uh there's so many people that don't understand their own potential and I see you and me someday, we all, I see and see our potential because we're friends, right? right? And there's so many people out there that are watching YouTubes and they're, they're attached to the fear. Uh, some of them are very excited about this coming because they see the opportunities, but let's say they haven't started yet, right? And, and all I see when I see you and my other friends, it's, it's just opportunities, opportunities. It's like we could grab anyone we want. As a matter of fact, we were just sitting, talking on a bench earlier today, praying, and, and about the opportunities that we have in front of us or the ones that we could go grab onto. Yeah. What would you tell people that um, don't believe in themselves or let's say they believe, they know there's something coming, they keep waiting. Like you said, this can happen to, you know, not tomorrow, but down the road. What are about the people that are sitting on the side waiting for this opportunity? What should they be doing now? <laughs> Taking action, of, obviously, yeah. right? So how do you take yeah, action? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, you can never get someone to take action who doesn't feel ready to take action. Okay. Right? It's like a chicken and egg, it's yep. a looping. See, what everybody should should really do is get, get clear. First thing you gotta do is get clear on what you wanna achieve. And, and that comes from simple things. It's like, it's just thinking through it. You know, the average, I don't know if you know, the average person never stops to think because they just go, 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 24 seven, nonstop. Yeah. They never stop to think. Yeah. See, one thing I do every day, I have at least 30 minutes, sometimes an hour of thinking time. Just sit down, relax, think through stuff, uh, look at my plans, look at my goals, look what I'm working on. And you know, I d that's what I do. I, and I, I spend time just in thinking time. And then I work through these things. But I think a lot of people feel overwhelmed and they're, they're afraid of all the things going on, right? And everyone wants everything to be perfect. Yeah. You know, we were just talking about recording this and there's dumpers, there's diggers, there's people on the roof, there's something going on there, there's motorbikes, there's some sort of event today, motorbikes going. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Let's just record. You know, it's fine. Let's just go. Let's I want to go down to the carriage house. Oh, okay. We'll go down to the yeah. carriage house. That'd be um, an incredible shot. Yeah, it's just, you know, you just got to get started. It's never going to be a perfect time to begin. You just got to get going, tweak as you go along and just... You know, you just got to have an idea, but if you wait, 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 the, you're never going to get there. And then you'll say, oh, it's too late now. I'm, I'm X age. It's too late. See, I, I, that's how I see it. You just got to get going. Let's bring it to the next, uh, next location, next topic. All right. So I have another question for Neil, but real quick, I got to share this. This structure right here is absolutely amazing. Neil, can you explain what this is? And then we're going to put cut in because this okay. was filled up and it's a lot taller than the three foot that's showing. Yeah, actually, we don't know why this was all filled. Uh -huh. it's, uh, there's no record of it in any of the documents, but this goes down probably about five meters. So at some point, someone would have filled this in. Why exactly, we're not, we're not sure. But yeah, this was the old gatehouse um, just here. So what you would have with any, with any property, like large stately home or castle, you would have a gatehouse and this would be the caretaker and his family would, would actually live here. And it's sort of like, um, you, know, you know, a modern day gatekeeper, if you call a yeah. company, right? So this was the gatekeeper of the, of the property here. It has multiple rooms, a fireplace. Yeah. It goes down 20 feet. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, lovely. 
you know, to wrap this up, Neil, mm -hmm. let's talk about like, where did you get, because you said you started all over. You came to the Isle of Man a couple of years ago, a little bit more than two years ago yeah. with nothing. And you now are rebuilding a castle. Well, I wouldn't say I came, I wouldn't say I came with nothing. Okay. I sold what I was doing in the UK mm -hmm. and I had some businesses in the UK. So I sold those. So I definitely came with money. That's right. You started yeah, over. Yeah. 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 So I don't want people to think, wow, Neil did this in two that's years. That's a good point. And, you know, good that's, point. that's not what uh, happened there. Yeah. So yeah, I, um, I came here with the funds and I just didn't know what I was going to do, but I really felt this was the, the, the property. And I just changed a lot of my businesses as well. So they're, they're predominantly all online businesses now. Yeah. And that's really what I do as well as the YouTube channel as well to, um, yeah, just, just to, you know, that, that's what I do now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the whole world's going digital. And I don't yeah. think there's a lot of people, you know, you brought up AI earlier right, right. and things like that. A lot of people are waiting for something to happen in the future, but they're not doing anything right now. Yeah. And it, could you expound on that? Like, what should people do, like, right now? There are people saving, there are people investing in gold and things like that. Yeah. Well, it depends on people's age as well, I think. Um, if you are a younger person, AI, definitely. It's something digital, look into the digital space. If you are a lot, lot older, I'd be looking towards safer assets in mm -hmm. this economy. So looking into very, very safe, safe assets where your money is going to be well protected. Uh, that's what I'd be looking towards. But again, it's about investing internally and building up your mindset so that no matter what happens, you're always going to be successful yeah. in, in any economy is the way I see it. And I think there's going to be huge opportunities, especially in AI. AI is going to be the big one. Uh, my, my words, it's going to be the big one yeah. for the next next decade. Yeah, and it's going to take a lot of jobs too. So at yeah. least you should be using it to add jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Neil, for you got coming it. on the channel. Yeah. You let me actually film part of the castle. I know the rest is I've never, secret. I've never let anyone I know. see it before. I know. So, and I, yeah. Yeah, I got, he's like, you can't fit, put it on the channel unless you fly out here in person. So yeah, yeah right off city. I love it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. With that being said, everyone, thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.